uh, this will be the lab class number 13 and uh, li like you can see there are few more lab class left and we have uh, given a lot of weightage on the laboratory component uh, because uh, uh, I am sure that you have learned lot of theoretical components uh, even in your uh, courses right. If you take a, um, a VLSI course you will be taught lot of things on lithography and uh, etching and silicon dioxide growing, but how exactly it looks like and how can you use it and that is why I thought of uh, you know uh, uh, keeping more weightage on the laboratory component. So, this will be lab class number 13 and here we will be give you a kind of a hands on training of course, uh, you are not here. So, it is not really a hands on, but we will be demonstrating uh, you how can you use the peristatic pump and the component within the peristatic pump. So, initially if you remember the peristatic pump that was just an kind of uh, um, uh, the teaching assistant showed to you uh, how the peristatic pump looks like. Here we will be showing uh, how can you operate the peristatic pump right. So, that is more focus on the operation of the peristatic pump uh, and then we will follow with other lab classes. So, that you have uh, a better idea of where to use this kind of uh, equipment. Till then you take care have fun uh, have fun in the lab classes uh, yeah, uh, I, I am hoping that you are enjoying lab classes and you are learning from the lab classes right. Till then you take care. Uh, I will see you in the next lab class, next lab class I am really sorry you see. So, uh, <laughs> uh, twisting of tongue right uh, and that is also a sensor, uh, e, e nose is something that uh, right now people are working on uh, which uses array of gas sensor, but same thing tongue. E tongue is another research area where people are understanding how can you uh, uh, give the robot a sensing of a human taste. Uh, so, uh, the, uh, human taste means uh, not re really testing a human uh, my point is how can we taste different food, how our tongue works right like how our nose works, how our tongue works right. So, uh, uh, array of chemical sensors or biosensors uh, can be placed instead of uh, uh, to, to replicate the tongue uh, there is another domain of research uh, like e nose and same thing another domain is for the optical sensors another domain is to understand the micro needles in the brain another domain is to understand the bio resorbable sensors where you just load or in insert the sensor below the subcutaneous region and it is like uh, once you insert it you do not have to worry about uh, reoperating the patient because sensor will dissolve within the body. So, a lot of interesting research domain you can uh, think about working on once you uh, understand the uh, this lab components and the particular course right till then you take care I will see you next class bye. Hello everyone welcome to the course on sensors and actuators today in this module we will see more about peristaltic pump. Like I mentioned when we when we are talking about pumping action why does it become important when we are studying about sensors. So, like we mentioned we will be studying how to make bio MEMS, MEMS based chip uh, which would mimic the human environment the biology and physiology of the human body like the heart or the lung can be mimicked into a chip uh, like I mentioned before the bio chip. So, how do we drive fluids through these micro channels like I mentioned the chip are there they have channel dimensions which are a few microns in length and width. So, how do you how do we how do how does one drive fluids through these micro channels in order to have this mechanism we have something called as peristaltic pump and they are of two type that is the hose pump and the tube pump. So, when we are talking about uh, peristaltic pumps, so they have tubes silicone tubing which are supported on rollers. So, there is compression and decompression this action creates a pulsating movement. Just to give you an example this is one such peristaltic pump in my hand. So, this here is the peristaltic pump here this is nothing but a DC motor. If you see the white the cream tubings here these are the silicone tubings this could be this is this could be the inlet and the outlet depends on how you have connected it and how and you can uh, as well program these devices. So, let us see what goes into the peristaltic pump uh, I will remove the top casing from this. So, 
So we have two parts here. This here is the motor. And what the motor holds on top is your device something like this. Now let's see what is inside this. this. These are again called as silicone tubings through which the fluid can be pumped. So when we remove the casing from bottom, these are the tubings. And here what we see is nothing but these are the rollers one two and three rollers so what happens is as the motor drives it pushes the three rollers at the set rpm the rpm in which your motor is driving it drives the three rollers here and the surface here the tubing which is here in between the roller and the outer casing if you observe is compressed. So what happens is as it moves to the stage 2 this portion release gets released and the next one gets compressed. So this cycle as it proceeds through throughout the rotation period there is a pulsating action created and this pulsating movement can cause the fluid to flow in a unidirectional flow that is if your inlet is this and your motor direction is clockwise and then you would have the entire fluid flow in the clockwise direction. So this was a simple casing how a peristaltic pump can look like otherwise the, 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 uh, again depending on your requirement the volume of fluid that will be flown through again should be considered. If you see this is relatively uh, 3 mm inner diameter silicone tube. So this is a 3 mm inner diameter silicone tube. So the, relatively it can carry more volume of fluid however when we are talking about the peristaltic pump which will be used for driving fluids through micro channels the silicone tube has smaller diameters let's get a hands-on on the peristaltic pump which is used to drive fluids through micro channels here as you can see this is a peristaltic pump a tabletop pump with four channels one two three and four when we have this device so it has one inlet and one outlet and when we do a comparative study the dimensions of this silicon tubing is much larger when compared to silicon tubing which is here so this has one two three and four channels and you can program it to have a different rpm depending on the requirement so the flow rate this could this can be the inlet and the other end can be programmed to be outlet so if you have to pump fluid at a certain flow rate then in a clockwise direction so you can have this pump programmed to rotate in a clockwise direction the rotor which is inside so these are so this here is the tabletop peristaltic pump. However, when we are talking about microfluidic devices where you need to drive fluids through microchannels, syringe pump is also used. So there are two types. One is the syringe pump and the other one is a peristaltic pump. Focusing more on the peristaltic pump here. Here there's like I mentioned th these are called as the cassette and when we remove this cassette this is the tubing bed 
1, 2, 3 here like I mentioned in the previous case there were 3 rollers. However, here there are 6. So, the number of rollers can vary from 2 to 16 depending on the number of pulses which, which can be generated as your fluid flows. That is the pulsating flow of the fluid. So, here you can see the tube which this is called as the tube bed. And here as we compress this portion the tube gets compressed between the roller and the surface here and then a pulse, pulsation is being created. And we have four such tubes running on a similar fashion. Now that we have seen how these four cassettes are having rollers which rotate depending on the RPM set by the rotor which is inside and then there is a tube bed on which the silicon tubings are placed. Now let us see the features of the device. Here the display has a home screen. So now the display here shows one which is nothing but channel 1. You can choose to program each of these channel independently. This is the second cassette, third and then the fourth. Here in this option you could select the language and this is a calibration setup. My, here this talks about microliters per unit of time. So, how much of fluid, the volume of fluid needs to be flown for a given instant of time and this here indicates the direction of the fluid flow. This is anti-clockwise. So, this on the right side behaves as the inlet and you this can be this will now behave as outlet if channel 1 is programmed like this in the anti-clockwise direction. So, we will have 100 microliter fluid flowing per, six, per minute. For 60 seconds, there will be 100 microliter of fluid transferred from my right hand side that is the tubing from here to the left hand side. And going forward, let us see what are the other things that can be programmed. Here, the tube inner diameter is what is being measured. This is 0.13 mm. So, the tubing here is almost 100 micron inner diameter. Now, you could assume, uh, now that you could see what, how small the inner diameter is, the volume of fluid that can be carried through this is also very, very small. So, this, the inner diameter is of 100 micron. Now, let us check the other features with the offered in this peristaltic pump. The rate at which the fluid is flowing and time can be adjusted again for each channel. And this is talking about status of each that is uh, we have already configured each of these channels for some values, for some readings and the home screen talks about that. You can even create a pulsa pulsating, like, uh, like I mentioned, you could have this entire flow controlled. So you can play, I mean uh, have the fluid flow, stop and then again resume the fluid. Even that can be programmed depending on the requirements. This here can be used to set your the fluid flow rate. Now that we have seen channel 1 to be configured, channel 2 in the anti-clockwise direction, 3 again in the anti-clockwise, 4 in the anti-clockwise direction. Now let us open one of these cassettes.
and see how the flow actually happens. Like you can see, it is moving in the anticlockwise direction because of the program and it has been set to run at certain RPM and the volume of fluid is around 0.1 milliliter per minute. Let's set channel 4 to work in clockwise direction. Now let's see I am in channel 2 and the flow or all the 4 cassettes had anti-clockwise direction. But then in channel 2 let's have flow rate in the clockwise direction and it is running at 0.1 milliliter per minute. And this can go on up to 300 seconds which is a very long time. Now so you can see each of these running at different RPM because of the program. Here 1 and 2, 1 to 2 is rotating in the clockwise direction, 3 and 4 in the anti-clockwise direction. We have programmed 3 to run, to, uh, we have programmed 2 to run in clockwise direction. Let's have all the cassettes back and then assume I have some fluid in the second channel, channel 2 which I have programmed and since the time here is very long, I will reduce the flow rate and the time and then you can see fluid flowing from channel 2 in the clockwise direction. Now we are pro we have programmed channel 2 to work in clockwise direction and I have reduced the time to 10 seconds. So the volume of fluid is this which will flow from left to right in 10 seconds. If you observe this is this here is channel 2. So this this is the droplet here which is getting collected inside this container. So here as you can see we had programmed a channel to flow in the clockwise direction and this is the liquid which got collected into the container here. Uh, you, this is nothing the, like if I smell it this is acetone this is not just simple water. So here what you can observe is it's not just uh, fluids like water which can be driven into the channels even viscous fluids can also be driven through these micro channel. Uh, there are experiments where you want to have fluids flow uh, have properties like blood so you have different combination and viscosity the property of fluids vary. So such fluids can also be flown through these channels. So now we had acetone which got pumped from one channel to the from one side to the other side of our peristaltic pump. So this was a brief about how pumps can be used to flow fluids in one direction and how you can channel and program the device in the clockwise, anti-clockwise or you can alter the RPM at which the motor is running so that you can control the volumetric flow rate at which the fluid is flown through the micro channels. Thank you.